Hello. Purpose of this video is to um, um, talk about one aspect of a process called curve sketching. In curve sketching, we use first derivatives um, to learn about some details related to the original function. One of the easiest details to find is what's called stationary points. There are three kinds of stationary points in a function, if they exist at all. Uh, one kind is a local minimum. This is not the smallest value of the graph, because you can see this graph goes all the way down to negative infinity. So it's not the minimum, but it is the minimum in the neighborhood. So we call it the local minimum. Um, it's a stationary point where the function stops decreasing and starts increasing again. We also have the local maximum. Again, it's just the highest, uh, the largest point in the area, and that's the point where the function stops increasing and starts decreasing again. And finally, there are stationary inflection points. They can do one of two ways. The function will decrease, stop, and continue to decrease, or it will increase, stop, and continue to increase. Either way, we call that inflection, because here what's happening is we're slowing down to a stop, and then we're speeding up again. When that happens, slow down, stop, speed up, that's called inflection. So, with that in mind, what we're asked to do is to find and classify all the stationary points uh, for the given function. In order to do that, I need to take the derivative of the function in order to find the rates of change. This function tells me the speed at which this function is changing over time, the rate of change, if you will. So my job in finding stationaries is to find out when will the derivative, what values of x will cause this derivative to give me a zero velocity. So I set the derivative equal to zero. It's quadratic. I apply my Algebra 2 skills to solving this, and I find that x equals 2 is the only point on the entire function where the function stops moving or where velocity equals zero. So we know we're going to have a stationary point, so I've, I've almost found it. Now all I have to do is classify it. Before I do that, though, I want to find out where that point is, so I'm going to go back to the original function and evaluate f of 2. And so doing, I find that the value of f of 2 is 9. So now I know that 9, or sorry, 2, 9 is a stationary point. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a, a number line, which is like a sign diagram, so I can figure out, I know that when x is 2, the function is stopped, but are we decreasing or increasing to the left and to the right of 2? 0 is an easy number to the left of 2, so I evaluate the derivative and find that it's equal to 12. And what that means is the function is going to be increasing when x is smaller than 2. So in other words, the function is going to go uphill. f prime of 3, I chose 3 because that's to the right side of 2 on my number line. And when I evaluate f prime of 3, I find that it's equal to 3, which is also positive. That means that f of x increases when x is bigger than 2 as well. So basically, the function is always increasing except for one moment in time when x is 2 where it stops. That gives me the classification 2, 9 is a stationary point. Sa sorry, stationary inflection point. That's the classification. Now, to produce a graph, all I had to do was uh, identify that when x is 0, y is 1. Nice and easy y-intercept, put in 0 for x, so we have that point. We also know that as x becomes large, we're going to have positive numbers, so we're going to end up in infinity. Uh, and along the way, we're going to stop right here at, and I should have labeled this better, um, and it should be a little more horizontally, but here's the point, 2, 9. Right there, in fact, I'll even darken it. There you go. So... Just to make sure that I did everything right then, I'm going to go to uh, Desmos, and you can see here the graphs look virtually identical. Given the fact this is hand-drawn, I'd say this is a pretty good graph. It looks a lot like this does, uh, and has at when x equals 2, that's where we have that stationary inflection happening. Another function that looks a little bit more interesting is uh, the function where x minus the square root of x. To find stationaries, I first need to find the derivative. Find the derivative, I first write it into uh, power form, and I apply the power rule to both terms and uh, rewrite the, the function so that it looks nice. Now, in order for the derivative to equal 0, 1 minus 2 square root of x, sorry, 1 minus 1 over 2 square roots of x should be equal to 0. In other words, 1 and 1 over 2 square root of x have to be equal to each other. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 square root of x to get this, divide both sides by 2 square both sides to get x equals a quarter. So when x equals a quarter, the function will be stationary. Now the question is, what kind of stationary point will we have, and where exactly is it? First question, the second question first, when I find f of 4, notice this is the original function, I find y equals negative 1 quarter, which means when uh, we have the point 1 quarter, negative 1 quarter, it, this function will be stationary. Once again, I produce a sign diagram to let me know whether we're increasing or decreasing. Um, also notice, um, well, 
never mind. Uh, oh, yeah. In my derivative, I cannot let x equal 0 because that would give us an undefined value, so I can't use 0 right here. So instead, I chose to let x equal 1 16th. Why 1 16th? Two reasons. One, I know it's less than a quarter, so it's between 0 and a quarter. And number two, 1 16th is a perfect square. I noticed I had to take the square root, so I wanted some nice numbers to work with. I find f prime of 1 16th to be negative 1, which means the function is decreasing from 0 to 1 quarter. No negatives because of the square root. Uh, after one quarter, I choose x equals 1, and when I evaluate the function for x equals 1, I get a positive result, which means the function is increasing. My conclusion, then, is one quarter, negative one quarter, is stationary, and in fact, a local minimum, smallest point in the area. Here I notice when x is 1, we're going to get 1 minus 1 is 0. I also notice when x is 0, we're going to have 0 minus 0, which is 0. So I have two x-intercepts for this function, after which the function will continue to increase. Probably going to get closer and closer to looking like... Uh, um, I don't know, like a linear function. Anyway, uh, when I plot the point 4, negative 1 quarter, it's down here. And just to make sure that I did all this right, I would like to see how good and accurate my sketch is. Um, I go to the computer and I find the exact point I was looking for. Nike Swish. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.